So we've moved on to part C of our torque problem, and part C says that we change our force to 200 newtons, but we keep our hand at the same angle that it was in order to try and change the net torque back from negative to positive. Uh, and we want to know, first of all, does it work? And if it doesn't, second of all, what force is needed to achieve at least static equilibrium? Uh, so, of course, first of all, we're going to see if changing our force to 200 newtons changes the net torque to be positive again. So, of course, we are given our friend's torque from part B and the angle that we had, our new force, and, of course, the wrench length again. So, what we want to find is the net torque, the new net torque that we have by changing our force, and that's going to equal our torque plus our friend's torque. Uh, so all we have to do is we just bring in the equations for our torque and our friend's torque, and if we remember, our friend had an angle of 90 degrees, so we're not going to even consider writing sine into his equation. Uh, so our torque is equal to our force times the length of our wrench times the sine of our angle plus our friend's force times the length of our wrench but of course we've been given our friend's uh, torque so we don't have to write those out separately uh, so the net torque is then going to equal our new force of 200 newtons times 0.1 meters times the sine of 44.4 degrees plus our friend's torque of negative 17 newton meters. And all we have to do is uh, calculate our value here and then add negative 17 to it. So we plug into our calculator uh, 200 times 0.1 times the sine of 44.4, and what we get is 13.99, uh, and then we add negative 17 to it. So our net torque is going to equal, uh, if we round this up to 14, it's just going to equal negative 3, because we're not worried about exact details here. We just want to know if our torque became positive or not. And as we can see, it is still negative. So no, changing our force to 200 newtons did not change the net torque back to positive. So now what we need to know, uh, because this did not end up as we wanted, uh, the problem says if it did not turn back to positive, what force is needed to achieve at least static equilibrium? And static equilibrium is a fairly easy concept to get. Uh, when you're in static equilibrium, all of your forces and all of your torques are just going to equal zero. Nothing is going to be moving. Uh, so you want to find the force that you need to apply to counteract your friend's force and keep this wrench from moving at all. So of course we know now that our net torque now equals zero. So uh, with our net torque being equal to zero, we just want to solve for our force now uh, using this entire equation that we had up here. Uh, and we can do that just by writing out our torque or, sorry, our force that we want to find times uh, 0.1, which is the length of our wrench, times, and then we're still keeping the same angle that we've had, so 44.4 degrees, uh, plus our friend's torque still unchanged from negative 17. And now that this is set equal to zero, we can just add 17 on both sides make things a bit easier. So 17 is going to be equal to the force that we're trying to find times 0.1 times the sine of 44.4. .4. So 
So then, of course, as algebra goes, we just divide by 0.1 times the sine of 44.4 on both sides. Um, and we don't have to write all that out. Um, we just plug that into our calculator. And our force that we need to be in static equilibrium ends up 242.9 newtons. So whereas our friend's force was only 170 newtons, we need this amount of force at the angle that we're at in order to even just stop him from making this torque negative. And that's a lot of force because our angle isn't 90 degrees like his is. And so with that, uh, our problem and this part is finished.